Why is it doing that? There we go. Okay. Ah, I can't sip this. It's too hot. Ouch. No. Freshly poured coffee. Not going to work. Too hot. All right. Hello, and welcome to the Creative Control Room Podcast pre-show. This is the part of the show where I go through and make sure all systems are go. And I believe last time on the last show, I mistakenly called it the uh, Happy Digital Podcast, which is the previous name of this podcast. But hey, I'm still getting into the habit of it. So this is the part of the show where I go around and uh, make sure everything's working. Audio's set up, intros and everything look good. Um, sound effects, all that kind of stuff. Let's check the camera angles. This one's not on. Hello. All right. Let's see. This one's good to go. Ooh, yeah, I got to change this. So this camera here, whoop, very bright. Um, nope, I don't want that. There we go. I took this one with me um, on a recent work trip. And therefore, that's probably better. Therefore, the um, exposure and settings are a little off, but that's okay. We're good now. It's been two weeks, and we'll get into why I was gone, but man, it feels like it's been a lot longer than that. Uh, I guess two weeks, a lot can change in two weeks. So anyway, okay. We got our camera angles good. We got our audio looking good. I just want to make sure I can hear this. Okay, good. I got to change that up because it still has the old logo in it too. Cameras, lights are on. I think we're, I think we're set. And I hope I can remember the, um, the intro here. Because yeah, two weeks is a long time. But anyway, happy 4th of July, everyone, by the way. And let's give this a shot. <clears throat> here we go. Episode 82. Hello and welcome to the Creative Control Room Podcast, a show for creators, makers, and doers, where my goal is to help you make to the max. I am your operator, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about EXIF data. Don't know what that is? Well, we're going to talk about it. Still don't have an intro, but we're going to run the one that I put before, and I've got another sound effect to go along with it, so here we go. There you go. <laughs> Welcome to the show, everyone. Thank you for being here. Oh, wait. There we go. A little bit of claps there as well. Feeling like the uh, the show should feel with uh, with a little bit of a uh, little bit of energy in the beginning. You know, I don't know if that's what you can call it, but hey, there we are. Um, I don't think I mentioned what uh, episode number we're on in the intro, but uh, we are on episode number eighty two. And um, if you're new to the show, my name is Ryan. This is my creative control room, and this is where, uh, you know, I, I do all my creative projects. I document all the creative things that I happen to be working on on this podcast, but I also talk a lot about photography, video, uh, podcasting, live streaming, FPV, uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff in the realm of content creation. So if that is anything that you feel like you might be interested in, um, why don't you hit the subscribe button wherever you happen to be watching or listening and follow me on social media at Ryan Hafey on Instagram and Twitter. Happy to uh, answer questions and uh, just, you know, if you want to drop by and say what's up, feel free to do that as well. It's good to be back. Um, I was not here for anyone who's been paying attention. I was not here last week after 81 consecutive episodes, consecutive weekly episodes. I was forced to take a, uh, a week off. And that's just based around uh, the fact that I had a lot of travels to do. I, I um, was on my longest to date work trip. It was uh, basically six nights, seven day work trip um, across a couple different states. Just very busy. Didn't think I would have the opportunity to get uh, any podcast posted. Obviously, I wasn't in this space, so I couldn't do anything live from here. I thought about doing kind of a pre-recorded show, but it just wasn't going to happen. It wasn't in the cards. So I had to um, kind of put my head down and just admit defeat. 
so here we are again, though. We're back, episode 82. Going to stick to these weeklies as often as humanly possible. But like I said, we are going to be talking about EXIF data today. EXIF data, if you're a photographer, you may be familiar with what that is. But before we get into the EXIF data, first of all, again, happy 4th of July to everyone out there. I hope everyone has a safe and happy 4th of July. I tried to, I don't have any like red, white, and blue clothes, but I have kind of a semi-red shirt. Also tried to make my background light blue, but for whatever reason, it shows up purple. Um, so I just changed it back to the teal. So I tried to go with kind of the red and blue theme today. Whatever. It is what it is. We know what today is. It's the 4th of July. You don't need fancy lighting to, <laughs> to show you that. But um, so let's talk about the trip a little bit. So my trip started... Uh, so there was, there was a fight on June 26, which was Javante Davis versus uh, Mario Barrios. I left um, here Wednesday of that week. Uh, the Wednesday before that, and uh, that fight was in Atlanta. So left on Wednesday, got in Atlanta. Um, no more bubbles in Atlanta. I've talked about kind of the boxing bubble and all the precautions, the COVID precautions that were taking place um, during fight weeks. And um, it was, I got to say, it was nice to not have a bubble, to not have to scan in and out everywhere you go, to be able to leave the hotel. Uh, we stayed at the Omni, which right outside of that is kind of the Central Park area in uh, Atlanta, so it was nice to be able to get out and just kind of walk around there if, uh, if I had the time to do so. But um, so I was in Atlanta to cover the fight week, fight week stuff there, and then obviously fight night on Saturday. By the way, at those Atlanta crowds, good lord, you guys know you guys know <laughs> how to uh, how to bring the energy for sure. But uh, it was a great fight, and then Sunday. Uh, which is when I would normally be flying back after a fight. Instead, I went to go see a, uh, um, a fighter and collect some content from his training camp. Uh, you would know him as the future two-time WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Mr. Deontay Wilder. Um, so I was able to spend a couple of days with him and get some really cool content from his camp, which you'll be seeing not here directly from me, but um, on uh, PBC uh, Premier Boxing Champions social media channels in the near future. But ultimately, uh, it, was a, it was a great trip. I had a lot of fun, uh, but it was so busy. My God, I, I was exhausted by the time I got back because I had to drive also from Atlanta to um, to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, which is where Deontay trains. So that's a three-hour drive, and then the day that I was supposed to come home, my flights delayed me. I didn't get in until you know, four or five hours after I was supposed to. So a long, uh, you know, a long few days of travel, but glad to be back. Glad I went, got it, you know, gotten everything that I needed to get. So it was worth it, but I'm happy to be back. But one of the things that came out of that trip partially is um, I finished another film role and you've heard it from me before. I, I love film. I love the look of film. I love shooting film. Uh, I love the colors you get from film. So uh, for e, the recent Zion trip that I've talked about uh, that I took my family on, I got some shots from that. Also got some shots from the fight and the training camp. So figured I would open that up and show you guys that, the, some of the, show, uh, the photos that I got there. So let's do that, shall we? All right, I'm going to bring this up. And we're going to go to this screen here. So this is obviously, uh, I think... Um, I think I opened the back of the camera at some point. I've taken pictures like this before, but opened back of the camera and uh, exposed the um, the film to more light, which would explain this photo here. But let's move on. So this was uh, this was in Zion, uh, well, in the Wildflower Resort near Zion, where we stayed. This was our bungalow. This is my wife and my son there. Another photo of them. Uh, but these colors man like you just can't de duplicate these colors and you have that the nice natural film grain on there uh, this is shot through kind of a little um, hut thing outside of our bungalow my son on the swing uh, my daughter doing some kind of strange pose on the bungalow front porch another shot there um, you can see in the background some of the covered wagons that they offered some of the covered tents um, there's a little sunset that I was able to capture. It didn't come through as as cool as I thought it might, but uh, still a fun experience taking that photo. 
another shot here of just kind of the front area, fire pit and all that kind of stuff. Again, these colors, like the greens that you get from here, looks great. Uh, this is my daughter on one of the bunk beds inside the bungalow. Um, this was, there's another off camera, there's another mattress. So this, this little bungalow on the inside is a lot bigger than you would think it is just from looking down the outside. This is Mrs. Hafey uh, standing out front of the bungalow. Another shot. I don't know what I was going for here, but there you go. Uh, this is a failed selfie with me and the missus. A little out of focus there. Kids playing on swings, playing games in the bungalow. My son, selfies in the mirror. Um, more kind of scenery. And then we move on to, uh, this was actually a, uh, a press conference, a fight week press conference, um, well, not fight week, but a press conference, uh, like a kickoff conference ahead of um, Fury Wilder 3. So there's that. Um, this one looks, uh, there's, I noticed a lot of the photos. I, there may be some, some light leak, some light somehow getting through uh, the camera, or maybe I removed the lens or something like that. I'm not sure, but if you kind of see this blue, over top of it here, I think it's just a little bit of light leaking in. Uh, fast forward, this this shot came out good though. I like how this one was framed. I like the light up there, kind of lighting them up. That was fun. Uh, this was this is one of my favorites from the roll. This is just a shot out of my window uh, in my hotel in Atlanta. Thought that was pretty cool looking. This was at the weigh in. Uh, one of the performers there, uh, Gervonta Davis and Mario Barrios. Facing off, got a second shot of that. This one actually looks a little bit more in focus. So there's this one, and yeah, this one's a little bit more in focus. Um, fight night, managed to get a few photos. This one, a little out of focus. Looks like I'm focusing more on the background, kind of a fail there. But I did take a couple photos that I thought turned out really well, this being one of them. This was actually, so I wanted to take a photo where basically the, the film camera was right on the canvas kind of shooting up and I wanted to wait for the fighters to get in the center of the ring. So I kind of had to wait for them to get center of ring, get focused very quickly and then kind of, you know, move the camera down as I'm looking through the view. Cause like if the camera's right on the canvas, I can't get my neck down to look and see what, you know, what my framing looks like. So I kind of had to follow it as low as I could go, hold it in position on the canvas, and then when they got into position, you know, hit the hit the shutter, and this was the result of that. I thought it came out really good. Um, the 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 problem is there is the the film that I was using was 400 film, and typically when I shoot boxing, I'm using ISOs, you know, anywhere from 2,000 to 3,200. So I had to compensate with my shutter speed. The, the, I was using a 28 millimeter lens, which has a maximum F2 aperture, or F2.8 aperture. So uh, I had to compensate with my shutter speed. So I brought shutter down to, I wanna say 320, 1 320th of a second, um, which, you know, again, this, uh, with this shot, there's not a whole lot of action going on. So there's not a ton of motion blur, so it worked out. But another shot I got that I really like was this one here through the ropes and this was just after an impact as you can tell and even in this shot not a lot of motion blur which is uh, which is pretty cool but uh, again i just love the look that this gives you uh, next up moving on to tuscaloosa um, this is mr deontay wilder this is a shot uh, from his home where he was training got a i mean pretty self-explanatory there and one more shot here of him and his team in front of his uh, till this day wall. Very cool. By the way, he's looking good, looking strong, looking fit. Um, and then uh, some shots out of my window on the plane on the way home. And I love, was it this one? Or I think it was, that one's good too. But I think this is the one that I love. We have a little bit more of the sunset peeking through there. And again, that natural film grain, just the slightest hint of an airplane engine below for a little bit of context. Um, but I love this photo. Another one of those. And then I, when I got home, I had a few more rolls to, uh, or a few more uh, shots to get off before the roll was finished. So I just took a picture of um, a signed glove. I believe that's signed by Sugar Ray Leonard and uh, some of my credentials up on the wall there. And then one more just of uh, my office space here. 
So there you go. Uh, that is my most recent film role. Uh, yeah, I, I just love shooting a film. I love the way it looks. But anyway, let's move on here. Let's go talk about the main topic of today's show. Exif data. <laughs> what is exif data? So exif data, again, if you're a photographer, you may be familiar with this, although, um, you know, especially if you're new to photography, you may not have heard about this yet, but this can be a very helpful tool um, for a number of reasons, which we'll get into. But EXIF, like many things in the world of photography, stands for uh, Exchangeable Image File Format, and that's something I didn't know until a couple days ago when I actually looked it up, because I know what EXIF data is and where you can, how you can find it. All these acronyms are just hard to keep track of, but that's what it stands for in case you're curious. But um, EXIF data is basically any data that's collected by your digital camera uh, when you take a photo, or in some cases video, it's a lot more common with photo. Actually, I don't know if I've ever tried to look. I mean, I guess EXIF data for video, you'll know frame rates or yeah, frame rates and and uh, resolution and things like that. So you get EXIF data for both. But um, I've used I refer to EXIF data a lot when uh, uh, when dealing with photography. So when you take a photo on a digital camera, depending on how your camera's set up, your camera is going to collect a lot of data and kind of bake that in to your image. So um, anytime you take a photo, your camera could be collecting the date, the time, the camera manufacturer, uh, meaning, you know, like what kind of camera you have, Sony a7 III, whatever it is, that'll show up in your EXIF data, your camera settings, um, your exposure settings, whether or not you were using a flash, uh, the, the size of your image resolution, your DPI, the color space you were using, like sRGB, um, your bit depth, copyright info, GPS info, et cetera, et cetera. There's seemingly no limit to the amount of data that is collected when you take a photo. And it's really interesting um, to see all the information that, that could be uh, captured. So just to kind of give you an idea, there, there are a bunch of different ways that you can view EXIF data, the, um, you know, there's uh, websites, for example, such as this one here, which is called, back here, uh, Metapix, and you can literally just drag a photo, or if you find one on the internet that you want to know EXIF data for, you can just paste the image URL there and hit go. So in this case, uh, I just used this photo here, which is kind of the blank version of my um, episode. Uh, thumbnail and this shows you here what uh, so, some of those details so in this case it was shot on a Sony uh, a6500 which is this camera right here and I was shooting at 1 60th of a second a, at an ISO of uh, one or an ISO of 125 shows you copyright info here um, let's see it's not going to show you focal length because I'm using a manual focus length or no, it will show focal length. I believe maybe, no, maybe not. Cause it's, yeah, it's, it's manual focus. It's not also not going to show aperture because it's a manual focus, manual aperture lens, but you know, I process this photo using Adobe Photoshop. Um, I exposed exposure program manual. A lot of this stuff. I mean, you know, there's more detail that you'll ever really need to know here. Uh, and most of this I'm never going to refer to, but if you need to know all this information, it's all here. In the format it was, uh, or at least the format it was saved in, I shot it in RAW, but it was saved as a as JPEG. Uh, let's see, modified, created. So you can see that um, it was, you know, I, I created it and then modified it a little bit later uh, on Photoshop. Man, there's just so much information that you can gather from here. And and let's try to do this. Let's let's just shoot, you know, let's just go landscape photo. And we're gonna find an image here. Now this doesn't always work, um, but sometimes you can go and find, like let's just take this image here. I'm gonna right click, go to copy image address. I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna paste it in, and let's see if we get any details from this. Okay, so in this case, nothing was found. And that's kind of typical of uh, photos online. 
oftentimes when photos are posted online, depending on where they're posted or how they're posted, a lot of that uh, EXIF data will be stripped. Um, and you just can't find it anymore. You know, some people uh, will, they'll purposely, purposefully strip all the data. Sometimes, again, when you upload to a service, it's going to strip that data. So depending on where the image is coming from, you may not be able to find it. But let's see if we can maybe find one that does have some intact um, uh, data here. All right, so this is a big file. This one is 2048 by 1365. Again, right click, uh, copy image address. Let's see if we can find anything from here. Paste. Nope, nope, can't do it there either. But you get the idea. So um, what I would say, well, let me get back into some of the, the benefits of EXIF data and why, why it's important. I just realized I wasn't uh, on my screen mode. That's okay. So yeah, different ways to view EXIF. Let's back up even more. So you can view them on websites like this. There are apps, like all sorts of apps on iPhone, I'm sure on Android that you can download and you can pull camera uh, photos from your camera roll. Um, you can get details from, you know, photos that you take on your iPhone uh, that you, you know, you, you want to know data, like what, what kind of settings I'm going to, oh, whoops, almost broke my phone there. So I, I have an app on my phone here. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Let's see. So we're going to pull up a photo here. I'm going to pull up a photo that I actually took with my phone. There we go. Let's try this. Okay. So. This was a photo, by the way, we got a new car. We have a, a Tesla Model Y, which is pretty cool. But this is just a photo that I took on my phone, and it's already giving you a number, uh, a bunch of data on it. So, for example, this was the file size on this was uh, 3 megabytes, image size 4032 by 3024, aperture f1.8, uh, one, one, 121 of a second is the, is the shutter speed, ISO 100. 4.5 millimeter focal length, uh, which I, I, you know, I guess on a super tiny sensor, that makes sense. It's going to show the location. It even gives me the latitude and longitude, altitude and address of, uh, where the photo was taken, all sorts of stuff. Like you can, you can scroll down by the way, just in case you're interested, this app is called, what is this app called? I think it's just called EXIF metadata. So if you want to check that out, uh, it was a free one, but there's a bunch of them, and I'm sure they all do the, the same exact stuff. So, yeah, you can uh, can download apps. You could also, um, on, let's say, Windows, we'll go back here. I'm going to right-click on that photo that I showed you a little bit ago, and I'm going to go down to Properties, and you can click on Details. Let's move up here. There we go. Nope, wrong one. I gotta change those again. Well, anyway, it's gonna be hard to see this, but that's okay. But if you right click, go to properties and click on the details tab here, uh, you can see all the EXIF data that was collected and the same stuff that it showed you on this website. You got the resolution, you're gonna have your bit depth, your, sh your shutter speed, camera manufacturer, all that kind of stuff. Whatever's available when you scroll all the way down, that's the data that was collected for that particular photo. Very cool. Um, also, if you're in Photoshop or Lightroom, you can look up EXIF data. So again, one more time, this photo here, if I go to filter, camera raw filter, it's going to pull up here. Now you're not going to get as much detail from here alone, but I, I'll often open things in camera raw and just look and see, like if I'm interested, what was the ISO, what was the shutter speed, what was the aperture of, of a photo that I like. And that, so that brings me to that, my next point, why, um, why is it important? Why is EXIF data important? What can it be used for? Well, for starters, um, you can find out who took the photo. Let me, <laughs> hello, I'm, I'll, I guess I'll make myself a little bit bigger now. There we go. Um, if you want to find out who made a photo, again, because a lot of copyright data is collected in EXIF data, you can figure out who took the photo as long as you have the original. Uh, you can understand, and this is the big one, you can understand how shots were taken. You can figure out, you know, if you see a photo and you're like, wow, that's an amazing photo. What did they use? How could, what, what kind of camera did they use? What kind of lens? What was the focal length they shot at? Was that a wide angle lens or was that more of a telephoto? 
what were the exposure settings that they had set up and then you know that you can kind of that can help you to get a better idea of how you could go and shoot a similar style of photo if that's what you want to do um and there's a website also called and i've talked about it before but it's called unsplash and unsplash.com is basically a place where you can upload uh, or you can download you can use um, any photo that's uploaded here for free for any any purpose, including commercial. Like they're, all the photos that are uploaded here by the users, they're essentially handing off all the rights to the photo, and you can use it for whatever you want. Um, now, I have tried. Happy Fourth. What's going on? What's going on? Um, I have tried downloading a couple of photos from Unsplash and then seeing if the EXIF data is still intact once you download it, and it's not. However. Uh, let's say you really like the look of this um, this sunset fisherman, whatever. You can go here and then down. Oh, you can't see it, but it's behind me. But there's a little info button. Click on that, and then it'll tell you. Um, so this one was shot on a seven M uh, Sony seven. Um, oh, I guess Sony seven M three, whatever that is. Uh, Thirty five millimeter focal length. F 2.8 aperture, 1 3 20th shutter speed, which that's that's interesting. ISO 100. That, that's kind of interesting. Focal length 35, I get that. The shutter speed being so high, I'm a little confused by. I mean, if you're just, I don't know why you wouldn't want to freeze action so so much. But anyway, I mean, that's neither here nor there. But you get the idea. It'll it'll tell you exactly what uh, what settings were used to take the photo. And that can be very handy when recreating similar types of photos for yourself. Um, let's see. Yeah. Again, you know, um, what equipment was used? What kind of, ca that's, that's a big question for photographers. Oh, what kind of camera do you use? Well, there you go. You can find that out. And GPS, um, you know, something that I used to do when I would go on photo adventures more often is I would, uh, look and find where photos were taken. And there are websites that can do that. I forget. I haven't been on some of those websites in a while, but there are websites that will tell you uh, where photos were taken and it can kind of map them out and show you. Well, if you're like, wow, you see a photo, like that's, that's amazing. I would love to go there and shoot a similar photo. If the camera, if EXIF data, if GPS is collected within that EXIF data, well, now you can, um, now you can figure out where it was photographed and maybe it's somewhere by you and maybe you can go, uh, go shoot it yourself. So that's, um, that's EXIF data. And it's very interesting, and I haven't talked about it here before, and I don't know how uh, how much or how many people know about EXIF data, if it's more ubiquitous or if it's not, whatever. But if you don't know about it, hopefully now you do. So um, next time you uh, you take a photo, open it up and see what kind of data is being collected on your phone or on your on your camera. It's also a good idea too to look at your photos every now and then, look at the EXIF data to see, you know. Do you, first of all, do you have like a secondhand camera? Did you buy it from someone else? Did they set it up so that their copyright information is on there? Are you taking photos and publishing them on the internet and it's got maybe someone else's copyright info on it? It might be something worth knowing. So it could be good to just kind of look at the exit data of your own images every now and then just to make sure that these settings and what the data that's being collected is customized to you. You know what I mean? But there you go. That's, uh, that's exit data. And it is... EXIF, Robert, EXIF uh, is, uh, it stands for Exchangeable Image File Format. Uh, and it is just data that's collected uh, when you take a photo or take video. So, uh, yeah. But anyway, there you go. And today is 4th of July. Uh, we've got some family festivities coming up. So today's going to be a little bit of a shorter episode because i got to get going soon. But if you enjoyed what you saw today, if you learned anything... Uh, it would be great if you would hit that subscribe button wherever you happen to be watching or listening. And of course, be sure to follow me on social media at Ryan Hafey on Instagram and Twitter. Um, if you want to see any additional photos from the fights from June 26th, I did post some there. Uh, so go check those out. Also, a few more photos from uh, Deontay Wilder's training camp visit. So if you're interested, head over there and uh, see what I posted. But I'm going to go ahead and call this one done. So thank you so much for being here. And uh, we're going to fade you out and uh, use a, a random sound effect to end the show. Oh, Robert, you were messing with me. Okay, I see what you're doing. Anyway, all right, guys. Thank you for being here. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.